Hi, this is Raymond Solder. Dapples of the Circus by Clarence Hawks, published in 1926, rewritten in parts by Ray Mossolder in 2022. Before we get into this beautiful story, let me share the biography of the original author of Dapples of the Circuits, Clarence Hawks. He was born in Goshen, Massachusetts on December 16, 1869, and he died on January 19, 1894. He was an American lecturer and author, well known for his nature stories and poetry. When Clarence was nine years old, one of his legs had to be amputated, which of course made him physically disabled for life. But that wasn't bad enough. At the age of 13, he became totally blind for the rest of his life. After a gun discharged in his face, during a hunting accident. He was educated at the Perkins School for the Blind in Boston, and one of his closest friends was his classmate, Helen Keller. In 1899, he married Bessie Bell, who illustrated his first book, and the couple moved to Hadley, Massachusetts. Nothing could stop him. In his prolific career, he saw the publication of over 100 of his volumes on a variety of topics. Upon his death in 1894, the New York Times referred to him as the blind poet of Hadley. In 2009, English professor James A. Freeman published a book called Clarence Hawks, America's Blind Naturalist and the World He Lived In. He loved animals. He wrote other novels besides the one I'll be reading now. Among them, in the year of each book as it was published, included Shaggy Coat, The Biography of a Beaver, Black Bruin, The Biography of a Bear, King of the Thundering Herd, The Biography of an American Bison, Piebald, King of Broncos, The Biography of a Wild Horse, Bing, the story of a small dog's love. And the latest book he published was the one that I'll begin now, Dapples of the Circus. And you can depend on the fact that I'll be checking out these other books. I believe this one will be forever one of Reach More Now's and YouTube's favorite audiobooks. I'll give you a little background on this book. I read it at the age of 10, and I loved it. I read it at the age of 20, and I loved it. Both George and I read it recently, and we loved it. Chapter 1 of Dapples of the Circus In the Beginning at the time our story begins, it's early 1917. They lived in the northern part of the island of Shetland, a Norwegian named Hans Peterson. He and his good wife had two children. Hans was 10 and Olga was eight. This was a very sweet family. But I mean, 
so sweet that the human family included the animal family. The cattle and sheep often wandered into the house through the back door, or even a small colt might be taken in to carry it safely over a coal spell. So you might say they were part of the family too. Most of the people on the island were either Norwegian or Dutch, but many simply called them Shetlanders. Hans Peterson's farm boasted about 20 Shetland ponies, four cows, and 50 sheep. Like most of the islanders, Hans also owned a fishing boat, and from June until September, he was off with the fishing fleets of the island. And this left the farm in the care of his good wife and Hans and Olga, and the children had become very expert little farmers. They both knew all the ponies, the cattle, and even the sheep by name. They could do almost anything with the stock their father could. They knew every acre of the farm, both in the hills and on the moors. The farm was like most of those in Shetland, with very little soil in general that was generously sprinkled with rocks. In fact, much of the soil was made by cutting dirt clods and seaweed in a wheelbarrow. The seaweed was used as fertilizer. Three years before the opening of my story, there had been birth at the Peterson farm, a Shetland colt, which was given the name of Blackie. But soon you'll find they changed his name. Nevertheless, all had gone well with Blackie until he was a year old. Then his master decided to import a better bred stallion in hopes that he might improve the breed of all his horses. That's why he sent to the celebrated stables of Colonel Balfour, whose breed of Shetlands was known all over the world for being among the finest. A month or two later, the new stallion arrived. He was only a year old, just the age of Blackie. Everybody was excited on the farm when Mr. Peterson drove away to town to get the new pedigreed pony. The children were still more excited when the farmer returned with a large box, taking up nearly the whole of the small wagon. When the box was finally unloaded and everyone got their first peek at the new horse, the children knew at once he would be their favorite for all time. He was a wonderful little dample bay. His coat was short, the result of much clipping and breeding for such a short coat. This was in glaring contrast to the long, shaggy, rather sorry coats of most of the other island ponies. The newcomer was a thoroughbred in every way. He was much lighter of build than the native stock. This made him look more like a real horse. His mane and tail were very heavy and glossy black. His eyes were large and soft, and he was as loving and gentle as a lamb. Hans at once climbed up on his back, while Olga put her arms around his neck and laid her face against his cheek, all of which the sweet, sleek little horse enjoyed extremely. Olga was so excited, she asked, What should we call him? Mr. Peterson answered, 
Billy's register's name is Sir Wilton the Second, but I think we better call him Dapper Dandy. But listen, whenever anyone comes to the farm to buy your horses, he must be called Sir Wilton the Second. The Petersons continued to love this newcomer far beyond all their horses and welcome Dapple Dandy into their house as a real part of the family. He was given a stall in an open shed, which was really palatial for a Shetland pony. But it didn't seem to impress him very much. If they could have seen the box stall from which he'd been taken when it was created and sent to the island, they wouldn't have wondered at his indifference. The children spent all their playtime with him. They rode him, they fed and watered him. In fact, they took entire care of him after getting their instructions from their father. Then it happened, about a week after the arrival of Dappled Handy, that Blackie wandered in from the hills to see what was going on in the house. And the first thing that met his eyes was the new colt in the yard and the children who were petting him and playing with him. They were laughing and having a really great time. Devil Dandy was a complete stranger to Blackie and immediately grew very jealous and very angry. Blackie trotted to the new Shetland and nipped Sir Wilton in the face. Devil Dandy drew back in astonishment. He'd never been treated so rudely before. He'd been trying to be nice, but this stranger had nipped him, was beyond his understanding. So he turned his head and wouldn't even look at Blackie. This was very unfortunate because he didn't see the disadvantage this put him in. He couldn't see the next move from this small savage from the hills. Before anyone even guessed Blackie's intent, Blackie wheeled and lashed out at Sir Wilton with both his heels, one of which struck him in the chest. At this point in the ugly scene, Mr. Peterson, who had been watching from the shed, came up with a whip and drove the angry Blackie away while he carefully examined the nip on Sir Wilton's chest. The children cried out, Is he hurt? And their dad replied, No, I guess not. But I don't want that back him ever kicking him again. Young Hans asked his father, Why did he do it? Their dad explained, Well, Blackie recognizes a rival for your attention. I'm sorry he is so spiteful. I'm afraid we'll have trouble if we try to keep both horses on the range when they grow up. But then again, this could blow over. But it didn't blow over. From that day, those two little horses were deadly rivals. Not the devil dandy carried his hate as far as Blackie did. Dapple simply defended himself as well as he could. But Blackie just wouldn't quit their war. Fighting between them always existed until the final winter twilight when they fought that desperate battle to the death in a little pocket far up among the hills. That's the beginning. Tomorrow, Chapter 2, The Final Battle.